Hi, it's Trial by Stone. Okay, so tonight I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I've kind of teased this video a few times, so I am doing my Arrow Video Blu-ray collection. So, I am quite a fan of Arrow, um, if I haven't said that before, which I definitely have. Um, I signed up for the streaming service as soon as I dropped it in late 2020, um, which is very fun. <laughs> it's a very fun service and one of my favorites. Um, so, a little bit of my history with Arrow, um, yeah, so I came in really late, I came in, like, 2020 collecting Arrow, um, after I'd really started collecting my, just, Blu-ray collection, and, or started my Blu-ray collection, and I <laughs> quickly found out that I'm one of, I'm a big fan, um, I'm really into cult movies, if you haven't noticed, and horror movies, and westerns, and samurai films, and Yakuza movies, and uh, just cult movies and just weird movies in general. <laughs> the splatter fix, flicks from like the 60s and 70s, my jam, monster movies, all about that. So they quickly caught my eye and they have become one of my favorites um, boutique uh, Blu ray uh, companies. So I'm going to show off a little bit of my collection. So, yeah. So. Sit back. This one's a little bit longer than my Criterion because I've been collecting Arrow a little bit more. Um, I've not necessarily. I, I've had my Criterions longer than my Arrows, but I, ha I definitely have more <laughs> Arrow than Criterion. And I'll probably talk a little bit about each one. So, yeah, be prepared. Okay, so starting off with my um, standard releases, they don't have the slipcovers, but. Yeah, so, starting off with Pray for Death. So, to be honest, <laughs> I don't know a lot about this movie. Um, it was very cheap, and it was, like, it was like 13 bucks or something, and it came out in... ...1985. Yeah. It was a, it was a uh, film from 1980, a, a ninja movie from 1985, and it's set in America. So hearing that, pretty immediately made me want to buy this. It, I think it's, I have no clue how it's going to be. It's either going to be, this is just my prediction of it, I will 100% review it once I watch it. I'm predicting it's either going to be really dumb <laughs> and really gory, or it's going to be um, a dumb, fun movie, or it's going to be really boring. And I'm really hoping for gory, dumb, and, and fun. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to watch it, um, if, if I didn't express that. So, yeah, this is Pray for Death. It came out in 1985. 1985. I think. Yeah, 1985, it was directed by, um, let's see. I think it was, um, oh, let me see, I'm so sorry about this, uh, Gordon Hessler from Scream and Scream Again, and The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, so, yeah, Pray for Death, from 1985. My next standard release is, I haven't actually taken this out, out of the, um, like, plastic wrapping, because... I literally got this like two days ago, but I have seen this film, and this film is Reanimator. This is one of my favorite cult horror movies. Um, I've seen it like four or five times now, and the first time I watched it was like a year and a half ago or something. Um, I think I started it during, or I watched it the first time in during COVID, and or during quarantine, and I really really love this movie I really fell in love with it it's so fun it's so fun um, the effects are great the gore is great uh, Jeffrey Combs freaking rules as Herbert West he's one of the, by far one of the most underrated um, he gives one of the most underrated performances in an 80s horror movie at most I man I love it so much I cannot speak enough praise about reanimator it is 
so 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 fun. It's funny. It's 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 a fun movie. I really love Reanimator. So yes, this is one of my one of my favorites. I'm very 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 happy to own it. I love this cover. Um, Reanimator came out in I feel like it was like like eighty five eighty six maybe. Came out. Let me see. <laughs> Um, man, I have not seen it. Anyway, this was directed by Stuart Gordon. He also did um, The Beyond and a few other films that are that I really um, anticipate watching. I think he did Castle Freak, I think. And I think Jeffrey Combs is also in it. So, anyway, this is Reanimator. I love this film. I cannot wait to watch it again. And watch this restoration for it. So, yep. My next is ooh, what to choose. Okay, let's go with um, Takashi Miike's Audition. This is a pretty, this is such a good movie. It <laughs> I was gonna say it's a pretty great movie, but I love this movie. It, it pretty instantly became um, one of my one of my all time favorites and a top one hundred of me. I have, I make so many lists, and I have a top 100 that is very, um, very solid, in my opinion. Um, and this is, this is on it, and it's one of my favorites. Oh, man, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so from what I understand, this is the movie that pretty much put Takashi Miike's name on a map. It is a... Hmm. <laughs> how to describe this movie? It's a love story horror movie. Kind of like, no, nah, not like Reanimator, but, but, um, yeah, I don't, it, it's, it's a Japanese horror movie, an Asian extreme movie from the 90s, I don't want to spoil it, and I don't have a lot to say about it, but when I watch it again, I will 100% get, get, give a review, and yes, I just love this movie, Audition, um, so good, I can't wait to show other people. Uh, my next film, of my standard releases, will be... Another film that I have not taken out of the wrap, out of the wrapping paper, because I literally just bought it like two days ago, would be Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. So, big fan of Cassandra Peterson. She is so cool. She is such a cool chick. I really love her, and Elvira is just a great film. It is so fun. She's a really B.A. female lead in a horror movie. Uh, you don't get many of them. Like, actually, like, leading the movie. Of course, you have, like, your greats, like, Jamie Lee Curtis and, and Halloween, and, I mean, I guess a final girl can, if, if a final girl can definitely be a, a, um, a lead for a horror film, but, and they typically are, sometimes, but you don't get a, you don't, you don't get many people like Elvira, and this is just a fun movie with some really cool effects, and it's just super fun. It Sandra Peterson rules. Yeah, love it. It's it's very in the vein to me of films like The Lost Boys or even Fright Night. Um. Yeah, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, very great. Um, eighties horror action comedy. <laughs> I guess if you call that. So this is another movie that I have not seen yet. But I have seen the remake of this, the American remake of this, and I really like it, but I need to give, give it a rewatch. It's been a few few years since I've watched it. But that would be Ringu. So this is the original one from the 90s that inspired the American one called The Ring, of course, and which a lot of people credit as one of the scariest movies ever. I... <laughs> don't, make, don't get me wrong. I love um, The Ring. I think it's a great horror movie. It really is. It's got some great special effects as well. Um, it's really solid. However, it personally did not scare me when I watched it. And I was fairly young <laughs> when I watched it. I mean, I came into watching horror movies at later than I honestly wish I would have. But when this, it was one of the first that I watched. I watched it and Blair Witch immediately. <laughs> or Blair Witch and The Ring immediately. And The Ring really didn't scare me. I, th I thought it was just a really good, um crime mystery or like mystery horror tinged thriller um because i mean that's what it is or a lot of it is 
It's definitely a horror movie. I'm not going to say it's not a horror movie, but it just didn't scare me. But either way, I did really, really love it. And I've heard that Ringu, in some circles, <laughs> believe it to be even better than The Ring. So I am very excited to watch this. I wanted to get Arrow's complete collection, but that is out of print, if I'm not mistaken. And it's kind of difficult to get. So, Ringu. My next is... This is a very cool film that I've seen a few times, and that would be Why Don't You Just Die. So this is a Russian film directed by, um, what's his name? Kirilly, or K Kirill Sokolov, who apparently has directed a few other movies called um, Could Be Worse, The Outcome, The Flame, and The Flame. And um, the award-winning Sis Sisyphus is happy. No clue what the, what any of those are, but I didn't know he directed other movies, so I need to watch them. Um, this is a very fun movie. I've seen it a few times now. It came out in 2018. It is very um, Tarantino. Um, really reminds me of another film called uh, Let the Corpses Tan, which is a Spanish movie, I think, from also like 2018. Um, it's very giallo, very, um, spaghetti western, uh, very splatterpunk is, is what both of these movies are marketed as. Um, very violent, very fun movies, very brightly colored, just fun, violent movies that I'm a big fan of. So, Why Don't You Just Die is a really good time, a really good Blu-ray. Uh, cannot wait to watch this again. I've actually wanted to watch it again very recently but I just haven't gotten around to it so why don't you just die? I'll review it when I watch it again so there you go my next uh, standard release will be one of my favorite 80s movies ever and one of my one of my favorite 80s action movies ever and sci-fi movies and one of my favorite movies of all time and that will be Robocop love this movie Peter Weller rules as Murphy <laughs> um the special effects in this movie are so good. The acting from Peter Weller is good. It is very tongue-in-cheek and very satirical. Um, what more can I say about this? Um, Paul Verhoeven rules. He's such a fun director. I love Total Recall. I love this. I love Starship Troopers. By the way, Arrow. <laughs> Release a Blu-ray for Starship Troopers and Total Recall. You won't, but you should. Um... So yes, I love this movie. Um, this comes with the uh, 4K director's cut, which I have not seen, and I need to. The original is violent enough, and I love it. <laughs> it is, this is such a gory movie, and I think a lot of people forget about that. Ed 209 rules. Um, yeah, this is a, such a good movie. I love it. Um, yeah, Robocop. <laughs> I don't know more I can say about it. So this is one of my favorite horror movies ever, and easily cracks my top ten. Easily cracks some of my favorite, or in my top 100 uh, films of all time, and this would be John Landis's 1981 classic, um, American Werewolf in London, and it is, in my opinion, the greatest werewolf movie ever, so far. Um, I will say, and I'm probably gonna get some slack for this, for whoever watches this, um, I have not seen The Wolfman, uh, Lon Chaney's The Wolfman. I own it, but I haven't watched it yet. I've seen The Werewolf of London, which is a review, so go check that out if you want. But The American Werewolf of London is one of my favorite movies ever. This is a great Blu-ray. Oh, man, this is such a good movie. The effects by... Um, oh. <laughs> it's not Rob, Rob Bottin, it's... Uh, oh, darn it. What's his name? Rick Baker. I hate that I cannot remember his name, but Rick Baker's um, amazing effects in this movie stand up today. Um, oh man, it was so good. This is such a good movie, and I love it so much. I've rewatched it a few times. Can't wait to rewatch it again. Uh, it's such a fun movie. It's very funny. The music's great. Um, the acting's great, the story's great, the special effects are great, and it is legitimately scary. <laughs> I love this film. It's so good. Um, John Landis' An American World in London. 
So, moving on from my standard releases, I have my slip cases. And I only have a few, and I've seen half of them, 75% of them. So, my first one will be the Lake Michigan Monster. This is a really good movie. It is really fun. It's just a really weird Sam Raimi Mystery Science the Theater 3000, which is a great show if, if you don't watch it, if you haven't watched it. Like, H.P. Lovecraft stuff in it. It's just a really fun, super, super, super low-budget movie that it, I, have, I have the highest amount of respect for. Um, the Just the sheer will that this movie puts into the sheer will that has been forced into making this movie is just incredible. I really love this movie. It's so fun. It's it's funny. The special effects are great. The acting's great. I love it. It's just, it's just so good. The guy who plays Captain Seafield, whew, rules. I love him. Can't remember his name, but yes, 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 yes. Ryland uh, Brixen Cole twos. <laughs> he also wrote and directed the movie, so. Go him. This is a great film. I really love it. More people need to watch it. Lake Michigan Monster from Arrow. My second seal book would be a film I have talked about a little bit before, and that would be called Versus. This is a very, very cool movie. <laughs> it's given in the 90s. It's an Asian extreme movie that um, was directed by Ryu Hai Kitamura. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I said that right, and it is very reminiscent to me of like, or I, I think I marketed this to my friend as, what if Edgar Wright directed a zombie, directed the Evil Dead in the 90s, except it was all in Japanese, with Japanese people, with Japanese actors. That is my... <laughs> marketing for this movie so if that doesn't sell you I don't know what will it was a very fun zombie action movie with guns and swords as they say in the arrow trailer that they put out very good movie really love it I actually really can't wait to watch it again so this next one I actually haven't seen these so I don't have a lot to say about them but I bought them from the director's name alone and that was the dead or alive trilogy this comes with dead or alive dead or alive dead or alive 2 birds and dead or alive 2 final so, I just love Takashi Miike, <laughs> Blade of the Immortal, um, 13 Assassins, uh, Audition, and um, Tsukiyaki, Western J.O. All, all of those are really good movies, so I'm really excited to watch Dead or Alive, but I haven't, I meant to do it when I got my gallbladder out, but I never got around to it, but anywho, um, I've heard these are good, so I'm excited to watch them. My next will be the uh, brand new 4K uh, Flash Gordon. So this is a very good movie. I really love Flash Gordon. It is one of my favorites. Ah, uh, man. This is a good movie. I don't have a lot to say about it. Uh, I don't actually have a 4K TV. I'm trying to get that so I can actually watch this. But I have seen Flash Gordon a few times. But this is a really cool release. So I'm pretty excited to watch it. Uh, so yeah, Flash Gordon. It's a good movie. I'm also trying to speed up because this is a pretty, pretty long video so far. So... I'm going to move on to my box sets and then my limited editions. So, next is my... Um, I, I've only watched two movies from these, from this so far. I've seen three movies <laughs> from this collection so far. And this would be the Herschel Gordon Lewis Feast. So, Herschel Gordon Lewis is a pretty f under... Like, not talked about um, horror director or like splatter director from like the 50s and 60s who really just got famous for his gore effects that I'm sure inspired um, either inspired or were inspired by um, George Romero from Night of the Living Dead um, so yeah so I have seen out of this Blood Feast 2000 Mania or no, uh, The Gruesome Twosome and um, The Wizard of Gore all of these are super fun titles. Um, it's a very cool box set with like 15 movies in it. Um, here, let me see if I can get them all uh, named for you. This comes with Blood Feast, Scum of the Earth, 2000 Maniacs, Moonshine Mountain, Color Me Blood Red, Something Weird, 
The Gruesome Twosome, A Taste of Blood, She Devil on Wheels, Just for the Hell of It, How to Make a Doll, The Wizard of Gore, This Stuff Will Kill Ya, and The Gore Gore, and the Gore, Gore Girls. This is a mouthful. Um, yes, yeah, it's a very fun collection. I'm very proud to own. And one of my more favorite collections I have. So, yes. All right, next we have... Let's do... Let's do this. We have Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto. So, this is a cool release. <laughs> um, okay, so I've already talked about Tattoo of the Iron Man on this channel. But this comes with a lot of his movies. Um, this what To the Body Hammer, The Adventure of Denshu Kozo, Tokyo Fist, Bullet Ballet, Snake of June, Vital Haze, Kotoko, and Killing. Which I've heard is his only, uh, Shinya Tsukamoto's only uh, samurai film. This is a very cool collection. Um, yeah. I, I don't have a lot to say about it because I haven't seen all of these, but I'm very excited to dig into this. Um, and I will be putting our reviews for all of these, so be on the lookout. So, Solid Metal Nightmares by Shinji Tsukamoto. Also, I just want to point out, Arrow's box sets are just the greatest. The hardbacks, I love it. Um, so yeah, so this next one is the Female Prisoner Scorpion Collection. Yes, <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I've seen one of these films, which would be Female Prisoner Scorpion 701. These all star uh, Miko Kaji, or Maiko Kaji, I don't really know how to pronounce her name, but she is also known as Lady Snowblood, if you're in the if you're in the know, um, which is one of my favorite samurai movies and the movie that inspired Kill Bill. Um, she even, uh, the song that she sings at the end of Lady Snowblood is even in the final scene of Kill Bill Volume 1, and I love that song. It's such a good song. And so, yeah, so... I was browsing Arrow one day, the streaming service, and I came across Female Prisoner Scorpion 701. And she sings a song in it called Urumi Bushi, or something like that. And I was already really liking the film. I was like, this is very Tarantino-y. Because this is when I was like really trying to get into Tarantino's like inspirations and stuff. I came across Female Prisoner Scorpion 701, so I look up that song and I find out that Urumi Bushi is actually at the very end of Kill Bill Volume 2's soundtrack. It's a hidden track that is, is on that soundtrack from Female Prisoner Scorpion 701, who is played by Miyoko Kaji, who played Lady Snowblood, who also has a song in Kill Bill Volume 1. So it's this cool little circle I found myself in, and I am not complaining. So I'm very happy to have this set. It took a little, <laughs> little probing for me to find it on eBay, but... I got it. I'm very proud of it. So, very cool. And yeah, these hardbacks are awesome. So, let me move that. So, my next collection from Arrow will be the Vengeance Trilogy. So, this is a Region B Blu ray, and I'm pretty sure that that one is too. Um, either way, very happy about this. Very, very, very happy about this. So, this is the. Um, Park Chan-wook Vengeance Trilogy, which comes with Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, and Lady Vengeance. Uh, Old Boy starring, uh, Ch oh, what's, I think it's, uh, Chin, oh man, Troy min uh, Sick, which is an excellent film, and one of my favorites. I, oh boy, it pretty much got me into the who, uh, to the whole, like, cult movie things, uh, cult movies. Like, I watched... Old Boy, Hellraiser, Reanimator, and Tetsuo the Iron Man within like a week of each other. And for the first time, and I just fell in love. Um, and then I discovered Arrow, and they changed my movie viewing life. And yes, very happy. So I'm very happy to have this. There isn't really a way for me to watch Old Boy. Again, I don't have a Region B uh, Blu-ray player. I'm trying to procure one. Or a Region Free one. But, um... Yes, very happy about this collection. So, I have it on um, backlog for me to watch <laughs> again, because I really want to watch it again, because I haven't seen it in about a year. I watched it on Shudder when it was still on there. So, my last and final part of the collection will be my limited edition Arrow Blu-rays. So, starting off, I will start with the brand new Django. So this is the original Django, starring Franco Nero, and... Um, Sergio Corbucci. Did I say Terrence Hill? I don't think I said Terrence Hill, but um, yes, starring Franco Nero and Sergio Sergio Corbucci. This comes. Uh, this came out in. Um, when did this come out? I 
I don't remember. Anyway, this comes with uh, Texas Adios, which is another film for, starring Franco Nero. And this is a very cool, very cool collection. It has a really awesome poster. Um, all of their limited editions have posters. I had to pre-order this before it came out because I was worried that it would be taken from me <laughs> by some other uh, jerk online. So I have it. I'm very happy of it. Um, very, very cool Blu-ray. Next, I have... Donnie Darko, the limited edition. So, I am a big fan of this movie. I was for a while, and I hadn't seen it for a long time. So I decided to rewatch it recently, and I still really love it. <laughs> um, I think it is a little edgy. The teens are pretty edgy. Um, and I think they're kind of huge stereotypes of teens, which the, this movie came out in like the early 2000s, if not the 90s, I don't really remember. And so it really wouldn't, it doesn't surprise me all too much, but still, it, it, is, it is a negative. Either way. Jake Gyllenhaal rules, Maggie Gyllenhaal rules, Patrick Swayze's like very fun to watch in this movie, even though he's an awful, terrible person. And it brought like tears for fears for like a whole new like generation of kids, like me included. So, yes, this is a very, very cool collection, and I'm very happy to own it. Uh, love or very cool movie, and I'm very happy to own it. A very cool edition of this movie, and I really love this movie. Can't wait to watch it again. So, Donnie Darko by Richard Kelly. The yeah. The next film, and the final, but not least, would be the awesome, brand new, Tremors. So, <laughs> so I was, I was, so okay. So a little history on this. So I watched this movie a, a pretty long time ago, like two, three years ago. It's a long time for me, at least. It's been a while since I've since I watched it, and not gonna lie, I was not a fan. I think I watched it on Sci-Fi. I thought it was really dumb, and it just, I did not enjoy it, like, at all. So, I was perusing stars, and I knew that this was going to get an Arrow release, so I was like, okay, I should probably rewatch it again, because Arrow typically knows what they're talking about, and I, f I feel like I've developed a better, a smarter brain <laughs> since I last watched it. I was like, oh, I might like it. So I put it on, and man, this movie's fun. This is such a fun movie. It's got my favorite use in a PG-13 movie of the F-word, like, period. Kevin Bacon says it, it's hilarious. Kevin Bacon's in this movie, and it's hilarious. <laughs> he's awesome in it, he's, he's really fun. Reba McIntyre's in it too, I don't, to be honest, I really don't remember her at all. But, yeah, this movie's so fun. It's got great practical worm graboid effects. Um, oh, man, I love Tremors. I really can't wait to watch it. I'm trying to get my brother to watch it with me, because cause, and he hasn't seen it in, like, ages, and he did not like it like I did, um, like I didn't, but I know he will this time, but he just won't watch it, but anyway, this is a really cool release, it comes with a pretty sick poster and a really cool, um, like anatomy of a graboid little thing, so it was a very cool release, um, very happy to own it, I also got, I got this Donnie Darko and Django within like three days, so <laughs> it's all very new, um, so yeah, so that is my Arrow video Blu-ray collection. Um, I will definitely be getting more in the future, and I will probably do an updated collection once I get a, once I get a fair amount more. So yeah, this <laughs> yeah. So I have a lot. Um, I want to review all of these at some point. Um, man, the Herschel Gordon Lewis fest feast is gonna be fun. So <laughs> just a lot of a lot of movies. So yeah, this is my. Um, it's my arrow collection, so it's a trial by stone. So, peace.